Well, I just can't leave this 70 propane alone. So I put in the new valves. I put my nurse tank on there. I actually stole it all off the grill with the, uh, the line and the, the bottle. Kind of been going through this thing, but one of the things that needed to be done was the, uh, the front spindles were loose. So when you picked up off the ground and uh, they would, these would rattle inside the, the tubes there. And what you have inside of there is at the top and bottom, you have a bushing. This bushing sits right about here on the, on the top and at the bottom, it's clear down at the bottom. And those bushings go around your spindle and they keep it from rattling around in there and they're meant to wear out. And also at the bottom, you have a bearing. I got a new bearing here. I just got this side done. So as you can see down at the bottom, I have my new bearing in there. Um, put the new uh, bushings in. And then one of the things I always do on my tractors, and this is just a personal preference, I don't know why, but if you see on my front uh, hubs, I turn them out like this. Now, most people run them opposite. Um, see them, most people run them this, this way. And it's just a, a difference on the way you space the wheels. But while I had, uh, had it jacked up and all, I went and got busy, took those off pulled the cap off, um, took the bearings out, uh, cleaned the bearings, they were still in okay shape, repacked the bearings, put everything back together, and I just got this side back done. So I'm gonna do the other side, and I'll roll the camera while we're doing the other side so you can see how I do it. And um, that's kinda, kinda where I'm at. I gotta put the tire back on here, I gotta shift the uh, jacks and all over to the other side, and then I'll show you how loose that other side is and exactly why it is that I wanted to uh, to put the new bushings in. I mean, it needed to be done for sure. So I got the tire back on uh, and everything tightened down. Swapped the jack over and my jack stand there for safety. Got this tire off the ground and this is what I'm talking about where you can tell those are bushings are bad is when I shove on here you see this whole piece move, move around. That shouldn't happen. This one I think is worse than the other side was. So we'll pull that tire off. What you gotta do is take this loose. Once this is loose, that uh, spindle will drop out and then I can start messing with the, uh, the bushings. she drops out goes pretty easy once you get that that off so of course everything's nasty greasy so I can't touch the camera right now but as you can see once you take the spline and this is the heavy-duty front axle this was an option I actually got the build card for this tractor and uh, it was ordered with this heavy-duty axle but inside Got a lot of old grease in here. I'll have that bushing, and then the bushing in the bottom. And uh, this, I'll have to clean off my hands here, but the um, other spindle had uh, quite a bit of wear. Not quite a bit, but it had some wear. Oh. up where that bushing goes and this area right in here and it is there is a little bit of a ridge um, on this one too but it's not not terrible I guess both the top and the bottoms the same way um, so we'll get that fixed and uh, take you through the whole process of how we're going to do that 
So one of the first things I did is I just cleaned the old grease around the top here so I can see the top of that bushing. You see the top of the bushing there. It is down in there just a little bit. It's recessed on this end. On the bottom side, it's basically basically flush. So gotta love that refrigerated air dryer. It gets me every time I'm filming, but it's great when you're painting or sandblasting. So what I'll have to do is I I had kind of forgotten how to do this, but on the other side, I got the uh, the air hammer in there and I was able to get in behind that bushing, get it peeled out, and then I did that on the bottom side. So that'll be the, the next step of this. And this is a very greasy, dirty job. If, uh, if you like grease and dirt, this is the job because it's, and I ran out of grease on the last side and reloading the grease gun. I'm uh, one of my least favorite things to do. All right, on my air hammer, I have a pointed tip. I'm just gonna try to get it in there on that edge of that bushing and just get it started underneath it and then bring it out so I can get a hold of it. So we'll go slow here. Trying to get it peeled out enough that I can get this behind and kind of wedge it out. This one's fighting me a little bit more than the other side, but I think this bushing's thinner. So there's less to get behind. There we go. Of course, now I just push the whole bushing down in there further. And there she is. So all I needed to do was get the air hammer and uh, start bringing it out. But here's what's interesting is this thing was wore completely through right there. That's how thin this one was. This one came out easy, I think, because because how, how much it had worn down and how thin that is. This side was really worn. So... Now we'll mess with the bottom side. I'm probably not gonna film the bottom side because I gotta lay on my back and it won't make a very good uh, video, I don't think, of me laying down there grunting. But that's, uh, I'm just gonna do the same thing on the bottom side, get it in there and get that bushing out. Got the bottom one out. Um, you can see where I ran the air hammer up at the deform it. These are, it looks like they were split. The new ones are not split like that. Um, but that was kind of interesting. I didn't, I guess I don't know if I noticed that on the other ones. Next thing I did was, you know, I'm just going around to check to see if I burred um, any of the inside of the, the cast tube at all when I did that. And there is a little bit here at the top. There's a little bit at the bottom. So I'll use my little uh, straight grinder here I'll get in there and just smooth it, smooth it out. I want everything smooth so when that new bushing goes in, I can drive it right down in place and I'll go to the bottom and do the same thing. Make this as easy as possible. I have screwed up these bushings before putting them in and so I'm trying to do a uh, better job at doing this. All right, the next step will be putting the bushing uh, in the top. Have my bushing driver set. I've got it set so that size there goes inside so and then that goes around the outside so hopefully i don't deform the, the bushing at all i've already kind of pre-lubed the inside there with wd-40 so i'll try to start tapping this one in
So she's going in, looks like everything's looking good inside and outside. And we just hit the outside with a little, little bit of lube. A little bit of lube never hurt anything. flush and I got to go under flush so I got to put a smaller size on there in order to go a little bit uh, it's just the same size it'll fit down in that tube to drive this the rest of the way down in there but everything feels good everything's looking good all right I've got my other driver on there it's just about the same size as the outside of the, the bushing so I'll take it down in a little further Just a little bit more, a couple more taps. And that's where I want her to be. So, went in pretty easy. First time I did this, I did not have that bushing driver. Uh, those bushing drivers, and this was not nearly as easy. So I'll do the bottom side. I'm not going to film that. It's just a reverse of this, except I go flush on the bottom side. So I only take it up to where it's flush. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right, I got the bottom bushing in. I'm going to next put the, uh, the bearing that goes down at the bottom of the uh, spindle on. Everything says put it so the riding is up. So the riding is on this side. So that, that's the side that I'll put uh, facing up. Put that on, and then I'm going to get the spindle set into the into my shaft here. All right, get the spindle lined up. Definitely a little tighter now than it was. I used the jack to help push it all the way up so that when I put the uh, steering arm on, it uh, is all the way up. So I need to. Just, just a little. All right, I just need to get it lined up here. didn't work.
Should drop in right about there. I don't know why it's fighting me. And that's uh, that's how you're set up. And then we'll just tighten up. Okay, nice and tight. Final thing we'll do on that is make sure that we get that tube back full of grease. I think on the other side this took about a hundred pumps of the uh, grease gun. Everybody's been telling me I need to get a battery operated grease gun and I just haven't done that yet. So I'll just alternately switch hands obviously you want a lot of lubrication in there because that's probably why it wore out the first time so I'm gonna guess it got kind of dry at some point and then it just started wearing down it was pretty dry on this side. The other side had some grease in it. Um, this side was definitely more dry than the other side was. Should be getting about full right about now. going in a little bit here to hopefully pick up a draw bar for this tractor and maybe some of the missing uh, tin work that I need that I can get cut down to make exactly the pieces I'm missing. I found a tractor kind of out in the field and the guy doesn't want to sell me the, the whole thing for various reasons. So I did talk him into selling me uh, the parts that I need. So I got grease coming around up here at the top, which is what I was looking for. I know that that's now full and you know, I can jerk on that. It is uh, definitely tighter than it was when I took it off where I could slide that back and forth. Next, we're going to work on flipping the hub around, which is a very messy project. First thing I Notice on this one as I spin it, just seems not to spin real easy and it's not exactly uh, the way I like them to feel. When I got the other side off, it had really old grease in it. Um, so it's a good thing that I'm do doing this. First thing you want to do is take a screwdriver or something and just tap off this cap. There's a little groove there. Just keep working it until it comes off. Starting to move. she goes 
So once that cap comes off, you'll see it's packed full of old grease. And then inside, if I can get the camera over there. It's not the best lit, but that's all grease packed around the nut. And then there's a cotter pin going through there. So I'm going to uh, have to clean all that up a little bit in order to get the cotter pin out. And then we will uh, take the nut off. There'll be an outside bearing and an inside bearing. Those are specific. So I want to make sure that I keep those in a way so they don't get uh, confused. So I got most of the grease cleaned off that nut. Cotter pins folded over here, so I want to get it to where I can pound it out. Get it as straight as possible. And then give it a couple taps. See if I can get it started coming out the other side. And that's going to break off on me. That's not good. But the short side's still there, so hopefully I can get it moving here. The other side works so well. So of course this side's not. There we go. Get it pushed out about as far as we can, and then we'll try to pull it the rest of the way through here. And we got the cotter pin out. Next, we'll be loosening up the nut. There shouldn't be a lot of tension on it, but I'll tap on it a couple times with the screwdriver. Then it should spin off. There's the nut covered in some nasty grease. And on the outside, we have one bearing. Again, pretty nasty. I want to set that someplace specific so that I know that's the outside. I can pull the whole hub off. And on the inside, there's a Kind of a dust shield that's holding in that bearing so i'll have to get that out and then there's another dust piece here that fits inside of there just to keep dust from coming from the inside through uh through there so all in all this doesn't look Terrible, everything's worn fairly uh, evenly. Doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna work on taking out that inner bearing and then I'm gonna put these bearings in the parts washer, clean them up, repack them, and then we'll flip the hub and put it back together.
Should have cleaned up around the outside of this. But you can see why that dust ring exists. Because all the dust that... I have to clean up that whole hub before I put it back together. I can usually tap on this a couple times. Start working that out without bending it like I just did. I'll work on smoothing that one side back out before I put it back together. But once that's out, then I can just pull my inner bearing out and then of course the inside of that is just full of old grease. All right, so I've had about 12 visitors here in the last hour. Uh, get back to this. Um, so I cleaned my bearings uh, in the parts washer. I repacked them and uh, I've checked my races inside the hub. They're good. I've cleaned out all the old grease uh, from inside the hub and so the next step will be to put my new newly packed bear bearing down in the race and I do know that that is the inside bearing um, one of the things I like to do when I do that this is a very messy job and before I even started I have a pile of rags laying here but I will uh, put as much grease around here as I can. So I got my grease around there. Then I kind of straighten this back up and tap that back in. Put my dust seal back in. And then I'm going to lift the whole thing back up and put it on the spindle. All right, so I'm going to bring it up and Work it on. We're good there. Let me adjust here just a little bit. So once that I have that on there, um, the next thing I'm going to do, this job is just a very greasy, dirty job, uh, but I like to repack in the middle of the, the hub here with grease. So I'm going to just shove, take fingerfuls of grease and just keep shoving them in there until I can't get any more in. And as the, if the hub gets hot or whatever, what happens is that grease there in the middle, you know, it's a little thinner and it gets drawn out into the bearing. So you just want to make sure that you've got a, quite a bit of grease in there just so that your bearings never run, run uh, get dry. It'd be a bad situation, especially if you're out on the road. Went to TSC this week and bought a bunch of grease because it takes a bunch of grease to do this. So, and I can feel I can't really shove it in there anymore. It's starting to come back out. So, I'll clean that off. Okay, so I'm packed in there with the grease, and I'll get my outer bearing, which I cleaned up and try not to get grease on the camera here. Fit it in down to the race. 
and then that forced some grease out. So I'm going to re put my grease back in there. I'm going to get my nut. Take it down. I need to clean my fingers off here. You see, this is quite a messy job. Then I'm going to just use my screwdriver and tap that nut, tighten it down. Check my tension on it as I do it. Because you'll reach a point to where it won't it won't want to spin anymore. And that's too tight. So I can feel a lot of resistance there, so I know I'm a little too tight. So I'm gonna back it back off. And then I know that my uh, cotter pin goes about straight across. So I got to reline up those those notches so I can tap my cotter pin back in, which I'm going to have to get a new cotter pin since I broke that last one. All right, get my cotter pin started. Which took a couple minutes there to find the hole because it's tapping back and forth on the. The nut till I can get it started. Starting to come out the other side there. in there. I'm going to flip up my end of the cotter pin there and bend it back over so that uh, everything stays in place. So that's done. Spins all right. Got a lot of excess grease going, which is okay. I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. So then the last thing that I need to do is I need to put the cap back on the outside. So I cleaned out all that old grease. I'm going to repack that with fresh grease again so that if things uh, get a little hot in there or whatever, it can, uh, this grease will heat up and get, get pulled in. Got my grease in there. Put it up. Just get it started with my heel, my hand. Get some of this grease off my hand so that I'm not get soaking into the uh, handle of the hammer too much. And then lightly. Lightly tapping the cap back on, and there she, she's done. So um, everything's done there that needs to be done. The next thing I'll do is I'll put the tire back on. I'll clean that off. The rim isn't going to fit on there right. But uh, and then once I do that, I'll show you. Uh, I can wiggle it around 
and the spindle's tight again, which is exactly what we want. Definitely was uh, super worn um, before I started this. So the front end of this tractor should be pretty tight after all this. All right, got the tire back on. That's how it looks uh, after you flip the hub around. I just prefer this look again, I think, to each his own. If you remember when I started this, I could grab the tire and rock it back and forth, and this would move all over the place, and I'm afraid I'm gonna knock it off the jack stand, but that's not happening anymore. And the tire spins real well. So that's, uh, that's where I'm at on the front end of this. Um, I just had somebody, uh, subscriber asked for me to do a video on the 66 Jet 3 Super and explain uh, the loader and how it's plumbed and all that. So that's a video that I'm going to probably do. That'll be a fairly easy video to do. And it's kind of nice to have the 69 next to it that I can kind of show without the loader in the way, um, you know, how everything's plumbed up and, and set up. So that's where we're at on the 70 propane right now. Uh, one quick note, I don't know if uh, this showed up in any part of the video, but picked this up last weekend down in Kentucky at my uncle's, just hauled it home. This is not mine, but it's a wheel horse, uh, 500 special. I guess they made these for the Indianapolis 500 back uh, as like a commemorative series or a special edition. And uh, so I just, it was being stored down at my uncle's. I brought it up last weekend when I took the 55 UB down there to be stored for the winter. And uh, the new owner is going to be stopping by to pick it up. I guess those are original rear tires on it actually say wheel horse on it. I don't know much about other than I hauled it up. So until the next video, uh, please like and subscribe. And I hope you're enjoying enjoying my videos. We'll hopefully have a plow day coming up here soon and some other things to kind of keep uh keep making some good videos for you so thanks a lot for watching